My name is Dunyawat Dunyapisut. I would like to present a recent uh, research on smart electrochemical sensor. So here in electrochemical sensor, we can detect a concentration of the analyte from various techniques like cyclic voltammetry, different power voltammetry, chrono amperometry, or electrochemical impedance spectroscopy. There are several methods we can uh, follow to get the models. First, measurement the signal, fitting the signal, and extract the linear uh, response parameter. Do the linear regression and make a calibration curve. Now we got the model. But the problem is, in electrochemical system, it is the nonlinear system due to the pH chain the chemical interferences or the chain on the electrosurface. To overcome this problem, we uh, develop a new material, such like a material with high uh, analytical property towards the analyte. However, design a new material is a very time consuming and expensive. Here is another approach we can get around the problem. So this is a machine learning approach from like a six step on the conventional approach. For the machine learning approach, there are only three steps. First, measure the signal, uh, do the machine learning uh, model training, and then we got a model. So here this is the example. We got the EAS data put in the machine learning model and then we can directly predict from the trained model. Here we can overcome the nonlinearity problem and we can do the detection in the heavy interf interference uh, system. In It's also the automatically analysis and they give a very high accuracy. So this is the example of recent research on the machine learning and electrochemical sensor. Here, this is the detection of propofol in the living cell. First, they measure the CV or cyclic voltammetry with the different concentration of, of propofol. So after they measure the CV, then they extract the important feature from the CV, like onset point and the redox uh, peaks. After that, they put into the machine learning model. In this case, it's a SVM, which, which is the support vector machine. Here, the SVM model can classify the data into five classes which is 10 micromolar, 20 micromolar, 30 micromolar, 40 micromolar, 50 micromolar, and 60 micromolar. So after that, the model can uh, able to predict the concentration of propofol, propofol uh, continuously, like a monitoring. This is the advantages of the machine learning. So, next example is the identification of dopamine. When the dopamine releases in the living cell, we can't get the signal. Here, this is the fast cyclic voltammetry, which is the cyclic voltammetry versus time. This is the time, this is the CV data. And we can get like a 2D images like this. So we put the uh, fast cyclic voltammetry data into the convolutional neuron networks. Then it can classify whether the data is the dopamine release or non-release. Here, this is the dopamine release data we can see some of the dopamine release region 
presented here, but here it is is a non-release data. So the machine learning can help us to classify this type of data as well. Next, this is the detection of nicosamide using the machine learning. This also the CV data. They measure the CV data from the electrode, which is carbonized CIF 67. They fabricate this, this electrode and then measure in the environment of different concentration of nicrosomy. Here, after that, they put the data into the potential versus the current, put into the neuron network, and then make a calibration plot. Here is another example of the uh, using machine learning in the sensor works. Here this is the final example, which is the detection of cortisol from the sweat using the impedance technique. So they, we can measure the uh, cortisol from the impedance signal like uh, here, this is the different concentration of cortisol and they present a different shape of the impedance. So, the machine learning can help to monitor whether this is the raising of cortisol or decreasing of cortisol. Here, this is the confusion matrix. This is the raising of cortisol and this is the decreasing of cortisol. From this data, the machine learning can classify 100% correctly of the raising or decreasing, which is help to determine the time of decreasing or the time of raising in the cortisol. Here, this ex all of the example show us the machine learning is very important in the novel research on the sensor works. Thank you.